Hello again, you extraordinary, extraordinary subscribers. Welcome back, everybody, to the Hemingway Land YouTube channel. So, one of the many ways in which I maintain my, no doubt, Adonis-like physique is through jumping rope. I rope jump five days a week, 45 minutes a day. It's mixing a lot with uh, bodyweight exercises, pull-ups, push-ups, so on and so forth. But for many, many years now, I have rope jump. That is the thing that I do, and I'm very good at it. I've been doing it for a long time. I could do all the tricks. And I think if you met me in person, you'd be like, that guy doesn't look athletic at all, and yet I can do all these things. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. The point, if you want to call it that, is that there are uh, channels on YouTube devoted to rope jumping. And uh, the people who have these channels, they have hundreds and thousands of subscribers. And uh, on a, I mean on a weekly basis, week after week, month after month, they produce new jump rope videos. And uh, realistically, there's not a lot of new information that's covered in these videos. Week after week, it's like, oh, here's another jump rope workout. Sometimes they'll do uh, a video devoted to like a tutorial about how to do a certain move, like the boxer step. But if you go over the history of their channel, you'll see they have like 82 tutorials on the boxer step to the point where you have to wonder when you're getting ready to like, when you're, when you're workshopping, okay, guys, what kind of videos are we going to make this week? You got to wonder like, oh my God, an 83rd tutorial on the boxer step? What new could we possibly, possibly talk about here? And yet they have to keep producing this content to, I don't know, remain relevant. And so if you go to their channel, you'll see 83 tutorials on the boxer step. Well, anyway, that is what it feels like on weeks like this. Guys, we've got a bunch of properties going live in Taos County this week, spoiler alert. And uh, I, quite frankly, guys, I'm, I'm tapped out. I don't know what to say at this point that you guys would not know or that is worth listening to for the bajillionth time about these properties in Taos County. I know some of you are thinking, hey, Hemingway, what about, what about all the new subscribers who don't know this stuff? Yeah, well, in theory, yeah, but uh, YouTube has not actually credited us with a new subscriber in like four years. So I don't know how many, how many fresh faces there are on this channel for whom this information will be new. Whatever the case, later on in the video, I will be going over all the many benefits and selling points of land in Taos County. Until that time, um, you know, last week I wrapped up the video by saying this bulk acquisition we're rolling out this week is one that we've been working on since April. Uh, the quick backstory on that, guys, we the person who sold us these lots, they sold us a bunch of properties in multiple counties. They're all small dollar properties. You couldn't put all these on one contract. You couldn't run them all through one title company. And so we do what we do sometimes, which is we hire a uh, mobile notary local to that person, basically a neutral third party. We mail them the deed. We mail them a cashier's check for a not insignificant sum of money. And then we say, hey, meet up with this person, collect their signature, give them the money, send the deed back to us, blah, blah, blah. And the person who we had hired for this back in April, she said, uh, okay, well, roger that. I'll totally do that. And then uh, we sent her everything. And then she said, I am in receipt of the cashier's check. We said, okay, great, fantastic. And, uh, and she tried to set up an appointment with the, with the seller. She had like a two-day window uh, that she was available. And then she said, I'm going to Mexico for three weeks. I'll see you guys at the end of the month. And um, I realized for many people out there, for many of you listening, you would be outraged, outraged that someone had taken your money and been so indifferent to the assignment and then just, oh, I'm just going to keep this cashier's check in limbo for a month. I, however, have become used to this here in Hemingway land. I have become used to uh, just, just levels of apathy, indifference, incompetence, abject stupidity, so on and so forth. I've become used to what could go wrong? That could go wrong? Oh, well, that'll definitely go wrong then. So I become, I become, I become inured to this is my point. And so when I heard this, I'm like, all right, I guess we'll wait till the end of the month. We've waited longer for things. So, all right. Well, anyway, end of the month rolls around. She gets back from Mexico and uh, we say, hey, you going to get that thing signed now? She's like, oh, I never, I never got that cashier's check. I don't know what you're talking about. And, uh, and then she stopped returning our calls, emails, and text messages. And uh, again, I think to many people out there listening to that story, you'd be like, I am outraged, outraged again. And yet I... I, I've just come to be, I've just got, again, a nerd, a nerd to this, guys. I just know, like, all right, I guess we have to wait for that. Now, certainly, we filed complaints with the California Secretary of State's office, the notaries, you know, insurer, their insurance bondholder, so on and so forth. But basically, we had to wait 90 days 
no communication from this person. And then on the 90th day, I was able to go back to my bank and put a stop on the cashier's check. And to the notary's credit, she didn't use the cashier's check. So in my estimation, this is somebody who simply misplaced a very valuable packet and then didn't want to admit it and went with the stupidest lie she could come up with. I was like, I never got that. The thing you confirmed receiving? Yeah, no, I never got that. Well, anyway, the point, guys, is that what began in April finally wraps up here at the end of August, almost September, with this bulk quantity of properties finally, finally, debuting on the website. Anyway, before we get to that, however, guys, let's get to this week's special thanks. Special thanks to all our valued customers. Started off this week, guys, in New Mexico. Sold some land in McKinley County to Sakshi. Sakshi picked up the westernmost of those three adjacent lots. Special thanks to Sakshi. In Torrance County, sold some land to Leonard and Julio. Both, no doubt, fine, upstanding gentlemen. Special thanks to them. In neighboring Valencia County, sold some land to Emerita, Nadia, Andy, and returning customers Sergey, Romaldo, and Ali. Ali, by the way, guys... Not content to purchase just one property in Rio Grande State. Not content to purchase even two. Nay, he purchased three. Special thanks to Ollie. Up in Taos County, sold some land to Tamika, Rise, and Tim. TRT, special thanks to them. And in neighboring Rio Reba County, sold that big 22,000 eight-acre lot out there to Chase. Special thanks to Chase. That is one of those properties, by the way, guys, the realtors like to figuratively say requires a little quote-unquote TLC, a little quote-unquote TLC, whatever the case, Chase will be giving it the TLC from now on, uh, as he no doubt cultivates the property into a fine, fine homestead, so special thanks to him. And guys, check this out, up in Colorado, more specifically Teller County, sold a property we did not even list to Mark and Kim. Mark and Kim picked up two adjacent lots, uh, they bought them for $40,000. This is an interesting story, guys, our photographer was out there in June, we were scheduled to close on these properties First week of June, our photographer was out there, first week of June, shooting the properties. And uh, Mark came over to him and said, hey, hey, what are you doing? And, uh, and he explained, and then Mark said, oh my God, I've been trying to buy these lots for 20 years. And the previous owner, for some reason, would never sell them to Mark. I don't know why. Mark seems like a nice guy. Whatever the case, Mark emailed us. I said, Mark, I will be glad to notify you when we officially take ownership of these properties. No doubt. In mere days. Mere days, Mark. And then it took like seven weeks. Seven weeks for the title company to wrap up. But when they did, I emailed Mark again. Mark placed a deposit. And then two weeks later, two weeks, guys, two, we wrapped up title and escrow. So special thanks to Mark and Kim, some of our new friends out there in Teller County. Special thanks to them. With all that said, guys, let's get to this week's new properties. All right, people, here we go. The land equivalent of the 83rd tutorial on the boxer step. So this week, guys, we are returning to northern New Mexico and more specifically the county of Taos for some new small dollar properties, all within very close proximity of the town of Taos. More specifically, people, we've got 14 new lots in Carson Estates and six new lots in Rancho de Taos. All of these, of course, are quarter acre lots. All are affordably priced at $900 and all are being offered with easy financing terms. Now, of course, at this point in the business, we have sold hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of lots in this region and in these individual subdivisions. These are intensely popular properties, specifically because they have so many of the things that our buyers are regularly looking for. First off, as mentioned, they're very close to Taos proper. In fact, if you look at the map right here, you'll see here's Taos, and here's where these subdivisions are located. It's literally about a five-minute drive outside of town, guys. Ten with traffic, I guess. And, uh, of course, when you're that close to town, that also means you're close to all the culture and museums and all the cool stuff to do out here. Not to mention the Taos Ski Valley, about 20 minutes away, which, of course, offers some of the best skiing in America. Additionally, guys, the subdivisions we're selling today all benefit from zoning restrictions, which can be described anywhere from relaxed to non-existent. That's for a whole host of reasons I won't bore you with here, but the point is the land can be used in many ways difficult to get permitted elsewhere in the state, from simple recreational uses such as RVing and camping, to building unconventional structures such as tiny homes and yurts. In fact, this part of New Mexico is known for the concentration of earthship homes that can all be found out here, with landowners able to take advantage of some 
of that very relaxed zoning. Now, as noted, guys, we've got properties in two subs today. Both are located right here off of Sheep Herder Road. The six Ranchos to Talos lots are all in this section right here. And the 14 Carson Estates lots are all located in this section here. Of course, these two subs are so close together and their properties are so similar because both subs were created by the same developer back in the 60s. Whatever the case, if you are interested in purchasing land in this region, you can come back to our New Mexico page here and you can scroll through all of these listings one by one. But what I would recommend and what our buyers who are really in the know like to do is come to our master information pages up here. We have one for each of these subdivisions. Click on these, scroll down to the list of the properties that you see here. And from here, you can pull each of these up on a map by clicking the view on map button here. Uh, this should help you to better compare and contrast these properties and figure out which should work best for you. And of course, guys, once you find one that you like, just click the learn more button here and you'll instantly be transported to that property specific listing page where you can purchase that property. In addition, guys, it should be noted that these master information pages are also helpful because we have these frequently asked questions sections on each and each of these, of course, are specific to the individual subdivisions and will help to better educate you about the region by answering some of the most common questions which we regularly receive from our buyers. Finally, guys, before we wrap up, I do want to point out that while we have 20 new quarter acre lots going live this week, none of them are adjacent. I wish they were. Sorry, guys. But unfortunately, when the whole sub was chopped up into these smaller parcels, it made them historically very difficult to recombine. Uh, that said, we do have five this week. We're not listing because they were adjacent to lots that we had sold in the past. And of course, as always, we like to reach out to those people first to help them expand their property boundaries. And for the first time ever, all five took us up on it. So advantage past Hemingway buyers. Anyway, guys, take a look at these. It's been a while. I want to say since December that we've had land in these two subdivisions. And my suspicion is it'll be a while again before we are back out here with new properties. So if you are interested, I would encourage you to act now while supplies last. With all that said, going live on the website next week, we return to southern New Mexico's Otero County with another two properties situated in the heart, the heart people, of the Lincoln National Forest. One's got trees, one's got no trees. Tune in next week to learn more. Until such a time, have a great seven days, everyone. We'll see you back here in September for next week's video.